Jay and Testa back on the check-in. Right now, we about to resume the R. Kelly Trapped in the Closet series. All right, let's get into it. Believe it or not, I just started laughing, shaking my head. Yeah, so wait, so last, last time we left off, he sat on the condom on his bed, and he didn't use it. He knew that was a thing. And just kept on laughing, thinking about all the things I had been through that day. Then she cries, what? Why do you have that smile upon your face? Then I left out, said, thinking about all the things that I've been through. She wipes her nose and she sniggles and laughs out, I've been through it too. Then I start laughing again and she start laughing more than next thing you know, we both are cracking up on the floor. And she laughs out, I can't believe this idiot really answered my phone. Now meanwhile, Tron just got out of prison and he's on his way home. Then she laughs, baby, I'm sorry for all the lies and all the bullshit. Then I say, girl, just wait till I tell you all the drama that I've been dealing with. She laughs, I wanna hear it all. Then I laughed and said, baby, first of all, I got a hangover, been trapped in the closet, slept with who knows, threatening to kill a pastor. She says, what? Baby, this is no lie. He had a lover, turns out to be a gay guy. She says, damn, you've been through a lot of shit, plus I got a ticket. Meanwhile, the policeman, he turns around, just out of concern, comes back to the house. Then he pulls up in the driveway, my car's parked crooked with the lights on. Then he goes around the back way He hear the dogs barking like something's wrong He gets to the back door And discover it's been broken in He looks around Pulls his gun out Then proceeds in Meanwhile we're laughing and laughing and laughing But from his perspective he thinks somebody's crying He gets closer to the bedroom And he would swear that somebody was coughing and sighing Meanwhile we're in the bedroom laughing As I'm trying to continue to explain She yells out, Sylvester, you're killing me I said I swear that it went that way The next thing you know he bust up in the room And said, motherfucker, freeze And then I look back up at him and said Wait, you're that damn police Then she screamed, baby, I mean Jane Everything is cool And then he yells Gwendolyn I got this I know you're sick And tired of this fool And then I stood up Star walking towards him Screaming Make it out my house Then he yelled free She screamed please And I pulled my Beretta out She cried I said that's the please Don't Visions of him Making love to her He said man Put the gun on the floor I can't stop thinking About him and her I slowly put There's Total silence, blood everywhere, and confusion on their faces as they continue to stare. Then Gwen starts shaking and crying, screaming, what did you do? And then the policeman looks at me and screams, see now I warned you. Then he starts pacing the floor, screaming, God, what have we done here? Then she rushed to the door, blood on her hands, screaming, there goes your whole career. Meanwhile, I'm freaking out, saying we gotta do something and gotta do something quick. Then he picks up the gun and says, I have a wife at home. I can't have no parts of this. She says, James, I can't believe you just said what you said. Cause that's not what you were saying when your ass was in my bed. Then I said, get married later. But right now, we gotta use our heads. First of all, did anybody think to check if the man was alive or dead? Then he looks at her, she looks at me, I look at them and we look at him. Meanwhile, Gwen's about to have a nervous breakdown, the way she's shaking and crying. And then she screamed, you bastards, you've killed my brother. And then I said, Gwen, wait a minute, I didn't. She says, no, you killed my brother. She said, he just got out of prison. He's been through a lot. He was talking about changing his life and everything and to come home and get shot. And I said, baby, it wasn't my fault. This man had a gun on me. And besides, how was I to know that you was getting down with this crooked ass police? And he says, now, nah, wait a minute. I say, no, you wait a minute. And then I say, man, this is my wife. We had a life until you butted up in it. She cried out, so listen, now, hold on. Even though he was in our home, let's not forget the fact that you was out there creeping in another man's home. <laughs> Man, he was cheating on his wife's little. Twan starts coughing. <coughs> and she says, Twan, oh my God, baby brother, are you okay? 
And he looks up at her and says, I'm not going to die, at least not today. And then he asks what happened, says, why did I get shot? Sylvester, what is this policeman doing here? And I said, go on, tell him, cop. He says, son, we got to get you to a hospital and take a look at that wound. Juan says, no, I'm okay, it's just my shoulder. All I need is a bathroom. Now five minutes has gone by and they're telling Juan everything that happened. Juan says, shit, man, I would have been better off in prison. And now somebody's banging at the door and I'm like, oh, no. And I said, because I'm not opening up another motherfucking door. And the cop says, when I get it, then looks at me and say, man, or the house my ass. Then I say, I'll get it, but whoever it is, I'm about to put their ass on blast. And then the policeman grabbed me, I snatched away and got my gun up off the floor. Then Tron says, man, that's what I'm talking about. So that's the point that shit tore the door. Then he snatches the policeman's gun and says, oh, what's up? Arrest me later. I count to three. Tron open the door. in her head <laughs> like that's gonna do something against them guns <laughs> it's rosy the nosy <laughs> neighbor <laughs> the policeman gets in his car and gets right on the phone backing up shaking his head saying let me get my crazy ass home and his wife picks up and says darling where have you been i've been worried about you and he says police business honey i can't wait to tell you what i've been going through she says are you okay yes do you need anything no well i baked you a pie mm. your favorite cherry then he said, I'll be there soon. Sorry, I kept you hanging. Then she said, Honey, don't worry about it. Just take your time. I still got some cleaning. Now, meanwhile, Mrs. Rosie's back at Wynn's house telling it all. She said, I knew it was something about that policeman. I started to cut loose my dog. Then Gwendolyn looks at her and laughs and says, Miss Rosie, you are nuts. And I say, all I wanted to know is what was you gonna do with that spatula? And then we all laughed. Yeah, Twan like, said she's a G, no doubt. Now now let's head right back on over to the policeman's house. He pulls up in the garage. She didn't expect for him to come that soon. She rushed to the door, kissed him on the cheek, says I was in the restroom. Then he said, what you say that for? And then she says, I don't know. Then he stepped back, look at her and says, what you all jittery for? Then she says, sweetheart, maybe it's that time of the month. Then he says, maybe, maybe that time of the month. And then she said, you know what I mean. He said, I know it came out your mouth. He said, you said, maybe. Then she says, baby, he walks in the house. And she tries to lead him upstairs, but he goes straight to the kitchen. She says, hon, I bought you some pears. And then he said, I'm going to heat this chicken. And she turns around, thinking to herself, with this weird look on her face. Then he screams, woman, what's wrong with you? Why are you walking back and forth, pacing? Before she answers, she's thinking to herself, what am I to say? Because the truth of the matter is, is that she just slept with another man today. And he said he calling her name. When did I know you hear me? But she can't turn around because the truth on her face, he will see it. Then he screams, Bridget, yes. look at me. Bridget turns around and then he says, what you got up your sleeve? She's scared out of her mind, stuttering and shaking and still talking about some pain. Something just don't seem right. He's looking at her while she's banging up. Then he says, with all my might, woman, I swear I'm going to shoot somebody if you've been doing wrong. But little does he know that somebody is still right there in his home. Kills? He looks around the kitchen. 
and says something that's really weird. And she says, why do you say that? He says, cause you keep trying to get me out of here. He said, ever since I've been in this house, your face has went from white to red. And remember when I first walked through the door, you act like you had seen a ghost from the dead. Then he says, girl, if you're hiding something, I'm gonna be so mad. Then he hears something falling. He says, what the fuck was that? She said, it sounds like it came from upstairs. Sounds like She the plumbing. He said, woman, that sound did not come from upstairs. I'll be damned if you're not up to something. Said, now the sound that I just heard came from this kitchen. And then he looks over by the stove while she's easing over by the dishes. And then he walks over to the refrigerator and pushes it back. And then he looks over in her face, looks like she's about to have a heart attack. Then he notices the pie on the counter, one slice is missing. Now the story's getting scary, cause he comes to realize that Bridget is allergic to cherries. Then he slowly looks up at her, and now her face is red as hell. He's breathing real hard, moving closer, she says, huh, you don't look so well. And then he says, move, she says, no. He says, move, she says, no. Bitch, move, she moves. And then he looks at the cabinet, he walks to the cabinet, get close to the cabinet, now he's opening the cabinet, now pause the movie cause what I'm about to say to y'all is so damn twisted, not only is there a man in his cabinet, but the man is a midget, midget, midget. Damn, I haven't seen it all, no? Now the midget jumps out of the cabinet and stumps the policeman on his toe. The policeman's hopping around on one leg, screaming, son of a bitch, why he runs under the table. He yells, freeze, and dives over the table and lands on the midget. While the midget is kicking real fast, screaming out, Bridget, Bridget. She yells, darling, don't hurt him. He says, Bridget, get your ass back. Then he continues to rough up the midget as if the midget was under attack. Then Bridget runs up to a room, goes in a purse and pull a number out. The police puts him on the table and yells, man, what the hell you doing in my house? He wipes cherry pie crust off his mouth and says, man, I was paid not to tell you. Then the police pulls his gun out and yells, trespassing, man, I've got the right to shoot you. The midget says, Mr. The man that paid me to do this would kill me if I tell. He points the gun in his face. The midget says, God, I think I just shit it on myself. Now it's Sylvester's house, so I got a patch on his shoulder playing cards, getting along. They're laughing and talking when Sylvester says, Gwendolyn, baby, get the phone. Then she walks away from the table, picks it up and says, hello. There's a lady on the other line panicking, crying and talking all off the wall. She says, wait, slow down. Tell me, who am I talking to? My name is Bridget and I found your number in my husband's pocket. I had to call you. Two minutes later, Gwendolyn's shaking her head saying, girl, I understand. Sylvester says, who is it, baby? She hangs up and gives him the address. Now, meanwhile, back at the policeman's house, the midget is crying his ass off. While he's lying through his teeth, about to get his little ass toe off. Then Bridget busts in the kitchen with a double barrel, saying, James, I can't let you do this. And then he looks at her and says, what? She says, I love him. The midget says, no, Bridget. And then James points his gun, says, we all gonna die up in this kitchen. Now Bridget and James are staring each other down, slowly back and apart. Then the midget takes his inhaler out, says, this is not good for my heart. Then James says, Bridget, don't make me do this. Baby, put the gun down. That's what the vest and twine bust up in the house and says, you put the gun down. While Tron and Sylvester are sniffing around Trying to figure out what's that smell As they turn and look at each other like What the hell This is what the priest broke up inside his house and then kids broke up inside his house. Now the midget begins to wake up cause he fainted from all the madness. See three guns pointed around the room. He stands and says, I have nothing to do with this. Then I said, hold up, you look familiar. 
do I know you from somewhere? And he said, man, I get around. You might know my face from here, there. Then James says, take a good look, cause you might not ever see his face again. Juan says, man, what the hell is that smell? Somebody done broke wind. And then Bridget starts crying while she's looking around. I said, I'm sure we can work this out, but first, let's put the guns down. Then Bridget cries, James first. Then he said, no, you go. Then I said, just do it at the same time. And they both looked at me and said, no. And then Twan says, man, let me shoot them all. And I said, we can't do that. And besides, man, you just got out of prison. And I'll be damned if you're going back. And then Bridget says, I will drop the gun if he promises not to hurt big man. Then James says, that's what you call him. That's his name. That's his name. <laughs> big man. Then Twan says, man, is that your name? He says, yeah, we left hot mess. Then I say, man, why they call you that? And he says, because I'm blessed. Then I start shaking my head, put the gun down, saying this is too much for me. Said, I can't take no more than hurt at all. This shit about to drive me crazy. And then I said, man, I should have never took my ass to the Pages Club. Then big man says, Pages, I've been there. That's probably where you know me from. Then James says, hey, hey, Chuck and Rufus, let's get back to the matter at hand. And Sylvester says, cool, but first there's just this one thing I've got to understand. James says, what? Then Sylvester says, how do you know Chuck and Rufus? Police says, what you talking about, man? You said Chuck and Rufus. Then Bridget says, on my stomach. Then Juan says, who the hell is Chuck and Rufus? Pointed my gun and said, talk to me, James. I said, Rufus, Chuck. Bridget said, I'm about to throw up. James says, man, my wife is sick. Juan says, man, don't believe that shit. I said, how did your wife get sick? He said, she's three months pregnant. And then we all said, oh, shit. Then Bridget says, honey, there's something I have to tell you. And then James says, no, baby, you don't have to say a word right now. Then she says, but James, he says, rest, Bridget, while I get these fools up out my house. Pointed the gun at us and yelled, please. Said, my wife is sick. Then Twan looks at him and said, motherfucker, you crazy. Watch where you point that shit. Bridget says, James, no! Sylvester gets a phone call! It's Gwendolyn asking him, is everything okay? And he says, hell no! He hangs up, then big man screams, look man, I'm just a stripper. I say a stripper, Twan say a midget. He said, I strip at this club called Dixie's, and that is where I met Bridget. Bridget says, James, he says, not now. She says, hon, please let me explain. Then Twan whispers in my ear and says, Sylvester, let me do this nigga, James. Big man overhears us and take his and hell out again. I said, I'm not killing no cop. James moving closer to them with the gun. Bridget yelling, stop, stop, stop. And then she says, I admit it. I did it. I paid him. Then James cut her off and says, baby, you don't have to say nothing. She says, no. James, I think you need to hear this. See, I've been covering for you a long time. Never said what was on my mind. I even followed you a few times. And when I saw you with her, act like I was blind. Then James says, wait a minute, Bridget. Just what are you trying to tell? Thanks again. Okay. What Twan and Sylvester is tripping. The midget's the baby. jump back to Kathy's house. They're getting up off the floor. Then Rufus says, Chuck, are you okay? Then Kathy closes the door. Then Chuck said, Rufus, what the hell just happened? Then Rufus said, I'll tell you. She just almost got a shot right here in this room. Then Kathy says, you got nerve. Almost got you shot. When you're sneaking in and out of hotels with him, ain't no telling what I got. Chuck says, and what do you mean by that? Kathy looks at him and says, figure it out. He says, ooh, Rufus, she don't know me. I will cut this bitch right now. Whoa. Come on and try it, motherfucking. I swear to God, just try it. Let me at Come on, bitch, James. Just try it. Rufus, let me go. Try it. Come on. Try it. Come on. Calm the fuck down. 
Woofy says, Woofy says, Chuck, we'll talk about it later. Then Kathy says, this shit is sad. Then Woofy says, well, it is what it is. Kathy, we might as well talk about it and try to get some understanding. She said, understand this, I doubt it. They talk a lot while the phone's ringing, ringing, study ringing, ringing, but no one answers, answers. They just ignores it. Ignores Woofy scream, I said, calm down. You're both acting like damn fools. A wife, pastor, and a deacon. Now how would that look in the news? Kathy says, oh, wife and a pastor. Looks good on the news. Then looks at Chuck and says, but a pastor and a deacon. Rufus, you don't want me to answer you. And then Chuck yells, bitch, who do you think you are? I've got a right to love whoever I please. Then Kathy says, if you don't get your nail ass out my house, cause ho, this whoever belongs to me. And then Rufus says, nobody's going nowhere. Until we figure this out, we'll all just be right here. And then Kathy and Chuck won't stop staring at each other. Kathy snurves her nose up at him. Chuck rolls his eyes at her. And then the phone rings again. But this time Kathy walks over and answers it. Says hello, Long's residence. Kathy, this is Gwendolyn, can you talk? Kathy says, I'm in the middle of something, not now. Gwendolyn says, girl, this can't wait. Please get somewhere quick to yourself right now. Then Kathy says, hurry up, I'm listening, shoot. Gwen says, okay, I'll make it quick, girl. Remember the policeman you introduced me to? She says, yeah, what about him? Anyway, girl, shit was tight until this morning. Everything went wrong. Chuck looks at Rufus and says, what the hell? He says, I don't know. She says, damn it, I'm on the phone. She says, go ahead, Gwen. Gwen says, well, it all started at this club that I was that last night mm -hmm. girl me and jane sitting in back in vip everything was so right mm -hmm. go on well me and jane sitting there laughing and drinking next thing you know here comes sylvester up in there with some old crusty wig wearing asshole kathy looks at the wig on the floor she says girl what's the name of that club when say page she flops down on the bed like what the fuck then kathy says gwendolyn gwendolyn says girl i'm not finished then she starts telling her about the policeman's wife bridget who was getting down with this midget then kathy says gwendolyn girl listen but gwendolyn's going on and on steady trying to get her attention but, but queen steady going on and on and on then rufus scream kathy are we gonna finish this conversation or what then kathy says rufus i'm on the phone then rufus says bitch i don't give a fuck then kathy says gwendolyn Shut up, girl, damn, just listen to me. You know that crusty wig, Gwen, who you was talking about? Gwen says, uh-huh. Kathy says, well. Gwen says, well, what? Kathy says, girl. Gwen says, Kathy. Kathy says, Gwen, I'm sorry, girl. That hoe was me. Sylvester and Twan gets in the car. Sylvester says, man, first of all, straighten your hat. Now, man, I'm about to go holler at somebody, and I'm gonna need you to watch my back. Then Twan says, man, you ain't even got a word about me. Bro, law, I'm straight. Sylvester says, yes, yeah, you straight eye with your hothead ass nigga, just like when you caught that case. Twan says, oh, here we go, you bringing that shit up. That wasn't shit but a misdemeanor. Sylvester says, misdemeanor, my ass, you did three years. If that was because of Roxanne and that bitch Tina. Man, your sister asked me about a Tina. Twan say when I see her, I'm a killer. What did Gwen ask you? She asked me if I knew her. I said she sound familiar. Sylvester says, hold up, man, what you doing? And then Twan says, man, what you mean? Then Sylvester says, man, is that a cigarette? Twan says, man, no, this some weed. Sylvester pulled over saying, oh, hell no. Nigga, what the you forget where we are. Twan say one for the road. Sylvester say you crazier than a fish with titties. If you think I'm gonna let you smoke that shit up in my car, now throw that shit out. Twan looks at Sylvester like he ain't trying to hit that. Sylvester says, throw that shit out. Twan looks around and says, shit, and throws it out. They pull off and Sylvester says, now this Roxanne and Tina, man, what's that all about? Now why they talk about that? Let's head on over to Rosie, the nosy neighbor's house. She's peeking out a window saying, there's something going on over there with Bernadine and Ted. Then her husband turns over and says, woman, what's wrong with you? Bring your old nosy ass back to bed. She says, now Randolph, I don't like that tone you taking with me. He says, oh, shut up, woman, you always in folk bin. Get them folk, they privacy. And Rosie says, I can look out my goddamn window whenever I want. Won't. Randolph say, yeah, well, what you looking at? What you looking at? Mm. Now Rosie and Randolph are arguing, screaming at each other loud as they can. Rosie says, Randolph, ain't nobody studying you, so go on back to sleep with your old grumpy ass. Then Randolph said, shut your ass up, woman. Shit, 
folk gotta get some sleep around here. Then Rosie said, sleep, shit. Mr. Can't get it up, your tired ass been sleep for the last five years. Now watch your mouth, phone, go to hell, Randolph. Don't, you don't tell me what to Can't do. Nobody I'm a grown-ass woman, I could do whatever the yeah. hell I wanna yeah. do. We do it then, I'ma do it then. Do it then, I'ma do it then. What's the move? Go on, look, I'm on look. And I hope a pigeon fly by here and shit on your face. <gasps> oh Lord, forgive me for what I just said. This woman got if it do, going on. If it do, then I'm gonna wipe the shit on you. Now meanwhile, between while back to Sylvester and Twan. They're driving alone when Twan says so man, where we going? Sylvester says, man, don't worry about that. Just be on the lookout and Twan. Your hat or my bag, give me a light. Now when we pull up, you keep the car and drive and whatever you do, keep on watching. Man, like I said before, don't trip, bro. Law, go handle your business. Well, I'm about to see if I can get this bitch to talk to me. We made a deal and she owe me some money. Man, I feel you, G. So call me if you need me. Man, everything should go smooth. Sylvester, don't make me have to come up in there and smack me a couple of... It's 30 minutes later, time goes by, 45 minutes later, time goes by, and now one hour later, a car pulls up to a restaurant, the door opens and someone gets out, first thing you see is some heels and a dress, black shades on, scarf around her head and mouth. Who could it be? Why are they here? Up the stairs they're going Through the door, down the aisle Like she's walking in slow motion Checking out the place As she walks, looking real cool Peeping out through her glasses Before she sits in the booth She goes in her purse, pull a cigarette out Puts it in her mouth, he lights it Then she blows smoke, pauses for a minute and says What the hell happened? First of all, woman, keep your voice down. I ain't trying to get loud up in here. Second of all, how was I supposed to know that your husband was a fucking queer? <clears throat> the waitress walks by. She says, I'll be with y'all in a minute. Now we made a deal, the plan was for me to come home with you Girl, I did my part, so don't you go asking me what the hell happened When I didn't want to do this shit from the start And then she said, yeah, right, you didn't want to do this shit But your ass got paid And then she said, Sylvester, I said, hold up, bitch, are you crazy? Don't be saying my name She said, whatever, how come you didn't tell me you was married to Gwen? First of all, between the fake wigs and fake names How the hell I'm supposed to know that Gwen is your friend? Bitch, out of here comes the waitress again Sorry I kept on waiting Childless place is busy It's always crowded about this time Can I start y'all off with something to drink? I said I'll just have a coffee With two sugars light on the cream and she said vodka straight up Hell, shit I need a drink Then the waitress said Girl I heard that I'll be right back with your drinks And then she walks away I look back at her and says She look familiar to me And she says what? I say nothing It's just a thought Anyway, girl, I thought the plan was for me to be in that house with you and get caught. She says it was. I said, what? How? She said, I changed my mind. I blew smoke, then I put my cigar out. Said, I'm out this motherfucker because you wasting my time. She says, wait, don't go. Well, then, God damn it, talk to me. She says, you wouldn't understand. <laughs> Try me. <laughs> Kathy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Try me. She blows her nose and says, Well, it all started one night when I was sitting in the living room. And sounds like I could hear somebody in the bedroom moaning and groaning. And I knew it wasn't me. So my curiosity led me to believe that he was cheating on me. Well, how come you just didn't ask him? Give him the benefit of the doubt. Because a woman knows, a woman just knows when some shit is foul. And then I said, calm down. Here comes the waitress. Ooh, like I said, it's busy around this time. But thank y'all for being patient. Said, can I get y'all anything else? I said, no, that'll be all. Then Kathy says, Sylvester, he says, hold on, because he's getting another phone call. It's Twan saying everything all right. Then Sylvester says, we're working it out. And Twan says, well, call me if you need me, dog. You know I'm holding it down. And I said, no doubt. I hang up, then Kathy says, well, anyway, let me get back to telling you what went wrong. Where was I? 
Oh yeah, the day I heard him arguing on the phone Now the story goes on and on And she telling him everything that happened While Juan's outside in the car Radio on, bobbing his head, just rapping Sylvester said, girl, are you saying He was having sex with another man on the phone? She says, yes, I say, I can't talk about this She says, why? I say, cause this shit is getting uncomfortable Now back to Juan, he turns the radio down Cause he gets a call He says, yeah, what up? And the voice says, yo, T, I got that information on Tina He says, talk to me, dog." What a word out on the street is the bitch stop stopped horn doing hair out of mama's basement and got a job haha <laughs> <laughs> it's right the day that bitch stopped horn is the day they stop selling dogs you feel me joe Word. where the bitch work at a candy store not a job that she got supposed to be legit i heard your girl off on some old waitress shit here yeah, waitress where Hold on, I'm waiting on my people to hit me. Roxanne, Auntie, on the place. You shitting me. Where this place at? He says, hold up, I'm getting a phone call. Now, meanwhile, Sylvester's asking Kathy, well, why you still love him? Then Kathy says, cause when I saw Chuck, I just couldn't lose him to him. And then the waitress comes again, but this time she brings the bill. He slides her 50, says, keep the change. She says, damn, thanks. She had y'all keep it real. And meanwhile, outside in the car, Twan's getting impatient. His homie comes back to the phone. Twan says, do I look like Invoke? He says, why? He says, nigga, cause the way you got me holding on. I got your dog. I got where the bitch work, live, information and all. Yeah, nigga, I'm listening. But nigga, first of all, you gotta kick me down, cause I went through a lot of crazy shit to find us. Yeah, whatever, I got you. Moved in with some nigga in the Jeffrey Manors. Round the corner, it's a place called Shay Shay's Diner. Nigga, you forget I just did three years. I need the exact address to where this place is. My bad, you right, kid. 9501, that's right off Halstead. Pause it right there. Now shoot back into the restaurant real quick. Sylvester looks up at the waitress and says, excuse me, but it seems like I know ya. And at the same time, Twan's in the car going, man, this address sounds familiar. Meanwhile, in the restaurant, the waitress goes a bubble and says, where you know me from? Twan's homie gives him the name of the place again. He looks up at the sign and says, what the fuck? And meanwhile, back in the restaurant, Kathy's nudging me under the table going, yeah. Sylvester. And Sylvester looks at the name tag on her shirt and notice that shit says, Tina. Then, the waitress starts backing up with this confused look on her face. While Twan's outside on the phone telling his homie, man, I'm right outside of the fucking place. Then Sylvester says, hold up, I just want to talk to you for a minute. Then she starts right. screaming, Roxanne's name real loud, this bitch come running from the back with a skillet. Then Tina breaks a beer bottle on the table and says, nigga, I will cut you with this glass. Kathy walks by me, going out the door, saying, not trying to get loud and hear my ass. Tina starts walking around, so that's the real slow saying, we take Tybo classes. Then Twan runs up in the place and says, I will kill both of y'all knucklehead ass. Well, 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 if it ain't Laverne and Shirley, Tina says, hey, Twan, Twan says, bitch, don't hate Twan me. Sylvester says, calm down, T. He says, fuck that, I just did three years for these hoes. Roxanne said, who you calling a hoe? He says, you bitch, she lost you. control and said, motherfucker, I kill your ass. Stop. What? Wait Come a minute. With a skillet. Damn about right. it. I will some motherfucking nigga. body. Man, you better tell him, fuck Wait that. Wait a minute. Nigga, think about three it. Three years. Three years. This time will be worse. Now come here. Sylvester takes Twan to the side. Tina tells Roxanne to calm down. Then Sylvester says to Twan, look, now I know you're mad, but before you go around here making threats, nigga, let's not forget the fact that you're out, but you're still on house arrest. Then Twan says, cool, man, I just want to ask him some questions about what happened. Sylvester said, I feel you, but calm your ass down, or nigga, you going back in. Twan says, I got you. House arrest. I got you, I got you. T. Chill. Then Twan walks over to them and says, How you doing, ladies? Tina, Roxanne, please excuse me. I mean, where's my manners? Cause, uh, that was very rude of me, Twan. No, I admit the way I came up in here, man, it was kind of wild. But that ain't shit compared to the way things gon' go. These bitches don't tell me what went down. Motherfucker, slow your roll, calm down, nigga, stop this shit. Come on, the the fuck that. All because of these bitches, my ass got sent up on a three-year bid. What you gon' do, nigga, kill these bitches? Yeah. And then what? Yes. Then what? Life, nigga. They'll lock your ass up and throw away the key. Then Twan starts thinking about it while Tina and Roxanne's watching him. And I say, man, forget about it. He says, no. I say, well, let me talk to them. He say, they sick ass man, you can't trust them. Nigga, it ain't about me trusting them. It's about you trusting me right now. <sighs> 
nigga, what's wrong with you? Are you crazy? You forgot I did five years in a pen myself. Now I'm telling you I'm not going back for you. These bitches and no motherfucking body else. So let me talk to him. I got this. Sylvester takes out his gun and shows it to the ladies, walks up to him and says, Now ladies, he takes the cigarette out of Roxanne's ear and says, Ladies, 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 ladies. He walks over to the counter and sits down. He puts the gun on the counter, goes into his pocket and pulls a cigarette lighter out. And then he lights the cigarette, blows smoke, and then says, Now ladies, it's very obvious that we have a problem here. A lot of questions unanswered. Let's answer them so we can get out of here. Mm. Safe that he is. He flicks ashes and says, Okay, which Watch one of y'all gonna start talking first? Then Tina started crying, saying it was supposed to be a simple operation. And Roxanne said if we delivered Muscle Man here, said it would be a vacation. Tron says, Man, I'll show you a vacation. Tron. Send y'all ass straight to the motherfucking moon. Tron, what did I tell you? What did I tell you? Ladies, Ladies, continue. Then Roxanne said on the way to Atlanta, everything was going smooth up until. Tron starts smoking trees and acting like a fool, and that's real. He got the radio loud, bumping Mary Jane, just swerving and shit. Did you tell him to stop? Yeah, I told him to stop, but he just kept yelling out, talking about I'm Rick James, bitch. Sylvester looks at Twan. Twan says, man, I was drunk. Sylvester said, drunk? You was drunk? Twan said, man, I don't know, I was just trying to have a little fun. With a whole lot of heat in the trunk. Man, I'm disgusted. Nigga, no wonder your ass got busted. Then Twan <laughs> says, man, who side are you on anyway? There's still Sylvester said, well, let's see. Reckless endangerment, loud music with drugs in the trunk, nigga, yeah. Twan said, man, this is some bullshit. Roxanne says, can I finish, please? Sylvester says, she says, well, to make a long story short, Tina says, Roxanne, girl, let me explain. See, Twan was kind of acting wild and calling us all out of our names then roxanne starts cursing and screaming meanwhile i'm in the back seat then all i know is i look behind me i say oh shit here comes the police roxanne said next thing you know twan started speeding yelling out they ain't gonna stop us tina says a few minutes later here come these squad cars and a fucking helicopter sylvester said did he stop then tina says no roxanne says but luckily that raggedy ass car he was driving stopped on us or where we be who knows then roxanne says anyway here we are the three fucking stooges laid out in the dirt now they putting us in the back of the car twan yelling out whatever y'all do don't say a fucking word and now we at the police they got us separated off up in these rooms Yelling all in our ears saying your man Tron said these drugs belong to you And I'm like what the fuck They say sister your light is looking kinda dim I looked up at Tina and said girl I'm not going down Not for him So there you have it Tron I gave you up It was me Tina she protected you Tron they protected me for what Tina said cause at the time I was pregnant by you T I see. Sylvester looks up at Twan and says, Congratulations, man. It looks like you done went and had yourself a little tea. Twan says, No, no, no. <laughs> this girl is tripping, G. Tina says, Tripping. Roxanne says, <sighs> Then Twan says, Girl, with your lying ass, tell me, how do you know G. that that baby belongs to me? Then I don't know where Tina's eyes start blinking real fast, and she says to Twan, how do I know, Twan? Sylvester said, are you okay? How do I know? Then Roxanne says, girl, I told you his ass was gonna deny this shit when he saw you. Let's go. Sylvester says, wait a minute. Twan says, bye. Sylvester says, Twan, she had see you. They both paused, turned oh, around. Right. Tina looked at Twan and says, in court, motherfucker wouldn't want to be here. Sylvester says, Twan, ladies, please, wait a minute. Don't go yet. Twan said they need to learn some respect. I say, Twan, he says, holla. Roxanne say, nigga, she gon' holla at that child support check. Sylvester say, ain't nobody going nowhere. Now y'all resolved it so we could put this shit in the past. Roxanne say, cool, we'll talk to you, but we ain't got shit to say to his old Shrek looking ass. Twan say, man, who this fever blister looking bitch think she talking to? T. She says, you motherfucker. I say, damn, baby, calm down. Roxanne says, what? What you gonna do? Tina starts to blink her eye again, but this time even faster than before. And then she cries out real loud and says, I can't take this shit no more. Then Sylvester asks Roxanne, what's wrong with your girl's eye? It's like it keep flinching. She said, a year ago, a pimp hit her in the 
eye And ever since then she's got this nervous condition Then Tron develops a soft spot and says Sylvester, come here, let me holler Tron pulls him to the side and says, man, what do you think? He says, what you mean? He says, am I that baby's father? Then Sylvester says, I don't know, it's hard to tell Especially when you was in the pen But it's one thing I do believe in that is Is that the bitch didn't turn you in Then Tron stopped walking around saying, man, I don't know A nigga feeling kind of strange Sylvester says, Gwen told me, dog, that you was thinking about making a change. Roxanne yell out, I gotta lock this place up, and y'all two got the gold. Sylvester says, what time do this place close? She says, 80 points is gone, and says, well, act like it's a quarter to four. Then he says, talk to the girl, Twan, it might be what you need. Twan is a family man, me. Man, I'm too deep in these streets. Sylvester said, man, that's exactly my point. This shit will settle you down. You need to get up off of that bullshit and go holler at that girl right now. Roxanne looking crazy, I'm like, go. Twan say Sylvester, man, I'm like, go. Then Roxanne moves closer to Tina. Twan give me five and then says, fuck it, yo. Then he steps to Tina and says, Tina, you want to work this out? Then Roxanne tongue kiss Tina dead in her mouth and says to Twan, I'm fucking her now. All right, let me head out. Yeah, bro, law, that's what I'm talking about. Shoot him. Man will let me. Y'all lucky I like that kind of shit. Or I'll be in a shot both of y'all ass. Come on, Twan, let's get the fuck up out of here. What, what you just gonna let him get away with this shit? What? Kissing? Nigga, come on. Bring your ass. It's go time, man. Come on. Shit. Fuck that. That's not hurt. I'ma go buy me a gun. And I'ma come back here and set this motherfucker off. <laughs> yeah, bitches. Believe that. Give me my motherfucking coat. Man. Alright. See y'all next time. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And like this video. And I'll see y'all next time.